From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and we're digging in with VMware with the latest update of the VMware Cloud on AWS. Definitely a, a technology a solution set that the ecosystem has been very interested to dig into. And to help us do that deep dive, happy to welcome back to the program Kit Colbert. He is the Vice President and CTO of the Cloud Platform Business Unit with VMware. Kit, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Stu. All right, so you brought along some slides. As you said, if uh, people want to watch, we've got an executive interview to give kind of the general business update. Uh, mm -hmm. But when it comes to the technology, uh, you know, I guess we start with, you know, v the VMware uh, Amazon partnership uh, is a deep integration. We've heard both from, you know, Andy Jassy and from Pat Gelsinger on how much engineering work and how critically important it is. Uh, anybody from the technical side understands that one of the interesting things in cloud is that Amazon created bare metal instances uh, to mm -hmm. support this solution. So uh, one of the items here is that there is a new bare metal instance. So why don't you bring us inside, uh, you know, what the updates are and, and what this means to the user base. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, the, the bare metal support is something that we work very closely with AWS on when we were first launching VMware Cloud on AWS. And the idea there with, with that bare metal uh, support is that it very similarly models uh, EC2 virtual machines in the sense of each of these uh, VMs or VM types or instant ty instance types, as they say, uh, are of various kind of t-shirt sizes, right? And so they have a lot of these different instance types. And so similarly speaking on the bare metal side, we're also seeing a lot of different instance types there. So we started out with an i3.metal instance and we added an r5.metal instance. And now we're really excited to add what we're calling i3en.metal. And so let's bring up a slide to talk more about uh, all the new capabilities there with i3en. You know, we, we have found when we talk to customers is that they love the simplicity of the hyperconverged model that i3 brings. But what they said was, hey, you know, we've got a lot of workloads that are storage capacity bound. And so that meant that, you know, they had just each of these workloads, they use some amount, you know, usually a good amount of CPU memory, but they had a lot of storage capacity requirements. What that meant with i3 is they had to get a lot of these i3 hosts to get enough storage capacity to support those workloads. And uh, obviously they had some extra compute capacity lying around. <clears throat> and so, you know, what we've done here with i3en is dramatically increase the amount of storage capacity. So we can see here, um, what is it, about 45 uh, terabytes or so. So much, much larger than what you can get, about 4x larger than what you can get in an i3.metal uh, today. So, you know, this is again, very targeted to those very large workloads uh, that need a beefy underlying server. And, you know, just trying to better align uh, the customer needs and workload needs with the underlying physical uh, capabilities. And so this is just going to be one of many that we'll bring out. Uh, we've got, you know, a whole uh, pipeline of these actually. And, you know, again, you can imagine all the different types of uh, VM instance types, right? There's GPU ones, there's uh, FPGA based ones, you know, so there's all sorts of different shapes and sizes. And you know, as we get more and more feedback from customers, as they're running more and more applications, we'll get more and more of these instance types out there as well. Yeah, really interesting, kid. It gives, it gives me flashbacks. I'm thinking back to you know, 10 or even 15 years ago when you talked in the early days of, did I just deploy VMware on the servers I had, or did I buy uh, servers that had the configuration so I could optimize and take advantage of the feature functionality that's needed? All right, when I heard some of the things you talked about there, um, about the, you know, being able to uh, use certain workloads and the like. Um, one of the feedbacks I've gotten from users is, you know, the overall price of this, uh, let's just say it, it's not the, the least expensive solution to start with. Um, so so uh, what, what, are, what are some of the new entry level options uh, that you have with the, the VMC on AWS? How, how does this update help? Yeah, yeah, first of all, on the price side, <clears throat> what we have found is that uh, this is actually extremely uh, price efficient, price competitive, if you're able to utilize all the underlying physical and bare metal capacity. Um, but you know, as you just mentioned, Stu, uh, you know, the default uh, configuration is three nodes of those i3 hosts, and that, those i3 hosts aren't small either, right? They're they're pretty beefy. And you know, if you just want to get started, just try something small. Well, today we do have actually a one node instance, but that one node instance. It's just uh, temporary. It's, it's kind of a test bed, if you will, a, a proof of concept type of environment. It's not a long-term, long-running uh, production environment. 
And so customers kind of have this one node on the one hand or three nodes on the other. And, and you know, obviously they're saying, hey, why can't we just start with two nodes, make it super simple, reduce that price point, again, for a very small footprint deployment, and then allow us to scale up. So if we bring up the next slide, what you can see is that that's exactly what we've done here as well, uh, supporting two nodes now. <clears throat> and the idea here is this is a full production environment. You get all the great VMware technologies, you can view motion stuff, HA, you get availability uh, and so forth, storage policies as you see here. So again, this is meant to be a long-lived, fully supported production environment that can also scale up uh, if need be, right? You might start out with two nodes, but then find, hey, I wanna add three or four, uh, or more, and you can certainly fully do that and fully support that. So again, this is just giving customers more optionality, more flexibility uh, for where they wanna come in. Uh, what we've been doing thus far is talking with a lot of customers that had you know, pretty large footprints and saying, hey, I wanna move a good chunk of my data center, or I've got a lot of workloads I wanna burst. And in those cases, three or more nodes made a lot of sense. But what we're finding now is that a lot of customers do want that flexibility to start smaller, uh, just with two nodes, really simple, kind of uh, put their toe in the water, if you will, and get a feel for the service and then expand from there. Yeah, okay, okay. One, one quick follow up on, on this. You mentioned that if customers are maximizing, uh, you know, leveraging the full uh, environment that they have there, it's very cost competitive. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, how are you hearing from data, from, from customers? What is their, their growth pattern? Are they getting good utilization? Uh, mm -hmm. do, do they have a good feel for, you know, how to manage that economics? In, in the AWS space, a lot of talk about things like FinOps these days and how to make sure that right. the, the technical group and the financial group are working close together. Yeah, so that's a great question, actually. And the whole notion of the economics around this is a huge focus area for us. We have a whole cloud economics group, as a matter of fact, uh, that we frequently bring in to talk with customers to help them think through all these different things. Uh, th there's a number of different considerations there. <clears throat> you know, the, the, a lot of them look from going from on-prem into the, into the cloud, to the VMC and AWS. And, you know, with VMC and AWS, our prices are just public cloud in general. It's very easy to understand the price because it's right up front, you're getting charged, right? Uh, On-prem, it's a bit more difficult to understand that. You've got a lot of capital expenses, you got a lot of other sort of operational expenses, you know, power, electricity, uh, people, and how do you, how do you make uh, all the right computations there? So we have whole teams uh, to help people think through that. But usually what we have found is that price is not the main thing, right? Price is kind of a secondary or tertiary type of consideration. The main thing is always uh, one of our primary use cases. It's like, man, I need to get out of my data centers or my data center is at capacity. I want to keep it, but I really need to be able to burst to the cloud. Uh, maybe some sort of test dev, like test in the cloud and, and production on-prem or vice versa. Those are the key use cases that, that bring customers in. And then it's really a question of, okay, now that you know you want to do this, how do we do this as effectively, efficiently from a cost perspective as well as possible, right? And that's where that, that sort of economic discussion starts to happen. And then you get into more of the details, like, okay, I, which kind of uh, instance type do I want? Uh, what are the cost metrics of that? Can I actually fill it to capacity? That's where we start getting into those more specific uh, situations for each customer. Excellent. Well, yeah, that, that really tees up for me, Kit. When, when I think about the you know, early customers that I've talked to that are using uh, VMC on AWS, they tend to be your enterprise customers. They're you know, yeah. big VMware customers. They have enterprise uh, license agreements uh, and the like. Um, VMware's got a you know, strong history working across the board. Uh, and you talk about cloud, in, in previous solutions, you've had close partnerships with the, with the managed service providers. Um, yeah. So my understanding is you, you're actually looking to help uh, connect between what you've done with the managed service project in the past and this VMware on AWS solution. So bring us inside, uh, you know, the, the, this, sure. this, this option. Yeah, let me, let me break it down for you because we do work with a lot of partners. <clears throat> you know, obviously from VMware's inception, partners have been, you know, core to our strategy and core to our success, right? And what we've actually been doing, actually somewhat kind of quietly over the past I mean, 15 years anyway, has been really building out uh, what we call our VMware Cloud Provider uh, <laughs> Partner Program and the VCPP program. And you know, the idea there is that we do have a lot of these managed service providers that can take our software and run it uh, on behalf of their customers, essentially you know, delivering our software as a service to their customers. And that's been great. We've seen a lot of success stories there. And we have about 4,200 of these folks now, like a tremendous amount spread all around the world, all sorts of different geographies, and also all sorts of different industry verticals. And so you see a lot of these folks getting really specific, you know, let's say into the finance vertical, all, you know, in and around Wall Street, providing all sorts of great uh, services for the financial services firms. Well, these folks are looking to 
evolve as well. And what they're saying is, and what they're seeing is like, hey, you know, just this basic idea of running infrastructure. Well, I can do that, but it doesn't necessarily differentiate me, right? I need to move up the stack and start offering more services and really trying to be a very, you know, sort of boutique and targeted solution for their customers. And so a lot of these customers, you know, obviously want to run on uh, VMC and AWS. And so what we've been doing is enabling these partners to, you know, sell through essentially VMC and AWS to, to sell these servers uh, to their customers. But one of the challenges there is that they're only able to sell the full sort of bare metal server. They weren't able to break that up or split that across customers as they can do uh, today within their own environments. And in fact, today within their own environments, they use something called uh, VMware Cloud Director. And uh, this is software that we give them. And, you know, it's really nice is you can take a vSphere environment, software defined data center and break it apart or you know, kind of carve it up, if you will, into multiple smaller tenants. Uh, then, the, you know, each of these uh, customers can, can take part of. And so, but we didn't have that functionality for VMware Cloud and AWS. And so that's what the announcement's all about. So let's pull up the slide to, to talk about that. The basic idea here is we can now enable those same software defined data centers that are running inside of AWS as part of VMware Cloud and AWS uh, to be accessed by VMware Cloud Director. And so what we've done is actually made, uh, we call it VCD for short, made VCD a service that we now operate and it runs there alongside uh, VMC and AWS. And so now these managed service providers can leverage the VCD as a service to dole out access and, and carve up uh, these SCDCs that they get. And you know, the, the takeaway here is that we're just giving these partners much greater flexibility and optionality in terms of how they consume the underlying bare metal infrastructure on VMC and AWS, and then give that out uh, to their own customers. Again, giving greater customer choice and options uh, to those customers. All right, Kit. So uh, the, the the other big thing that we we've covered uh, uh, this year with VMware, of course, is the launch of vSphere Seven. What yep. that means in the cloud native space, the whole Tanzu uh, portfolio line. So help us understand how all the application modernization, Kubernetes, uh, and the like ties into yep. uh, the solution that we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. This has been a huge focus for us, as you know. You know, we launched Tanzu uh, last year at VMworld and uh, have you know, then launched the product set earlier this year, so finally ready to GA. Seen great customer interest and customer traction there. And obviously one of the big questions people had was like, hey, how can I get this for a VMC and AWS? And so you know, the specific product they were looking at there was called Tanzu Kubernetes Grid. And so the idea with Tanzu Kubernetes Grid is that it enables uh, a customer to provision and manage Kubernetes clusters across any cloud, right? And you can do this on AWS, you can do this on-prem, on vSphere, or, or other clouds, and so forth. <clears throat> and um, so obviously, this technology needed to come to VMC. You know, the thing we talk about with customers when it comes to VMC and AWS is this notion of migrate, then modernize. That we can migrate you off of your on-prem infrastructure to this modernized cloud infrastructure that is VMC and AWS. And once you have that modernized infrastructure, it makes it much easier to modernize your applications. You've got all sorts of great, AWS services sitting there. Um, so now the application itself can start taking advantage of all these things, as well as these new uh, type of capabilities. So let's, let's pull up the slide for this one. So what we're announcing here is Tanzu Kubernetes Grid Plus on VMC and AWS. <clears throat> and what this gives you is all that great functionality, the ability to get Kubernetes seamlessly running on top of your VMC environment, right next to all of your existing apps. So this is not one of those situations where you need you know, separate clusters or different environments. You can have a single environment that can have both your traditional applications and your more modern ones. And Tanzu Kubernetes Grid takes care of all the management of that Kubernetes environment. Uh, it ensures that it's up to date, you know, properly lifecycle managed, uh, manages all the security, you get a container registry there, uh, it can elastically scale based on demand. And of course you get all that great consistency as well. And you know, we do have a lot of customers that are multi-cloud that, that are doing things across different, different environments. And so TKG can replicate itself and give you that consistent management across any of those environments, on-prem, in the cloud, between clouds. So that's really what the power of this is. And again, it's really taking VMC from just being a platform for migrating your existing workloads to really being a platform for modernizing those workloads as well. Yeah, uh, it, it's interesting, Kit. You know, you th when I think about traditionally VMware, it was, you know, let me take my app and I'm going to shove it in a VM and I'll never think about it again. So yeah. what, what, what's the change in mindset? How do you make sure that it's not just, you know, stick it in there and forget about it, but 
uh, you know, can move and change, which is, you know, really the, the, the call for today is that I, I need to be more agile and need to be able to respond to change. So that's a great question. And we actually spend a lot of time talking about this with customers. So if we take a step back, you know, it's important to understand the traditional journey most customers are looking at when they're moving to the cloud. Um, I talk about this notion of migrating, then modernizing. Oftentimes, you know, before the advent of VMC and AWS, you didn't have the ability to take those two apart. You had to mi migrate and modernize simultaneously. In order to move to the cloud, you actually had to do a bunch of refactoring and retooling and so forth to your application. And obviously that created a lot of challenges because it slowed how quickly customers could move up to the cloud. And so what we've done, which I think is really, really powerful, is kind of broken those two apart. To say, you know what, you may have a business imperative to get out of the data center, we can help you do that. We can move, you know, some customers have moved hundreds of workloads a week uh, up to VMC and AWS. <clears throat> and then, you know, once you've done that, you now have a little bit more breathing room, right? You've gotten out of your immediate business problem. Uh, let's say in this case, you know, closing down a data center. And now you can sort of focus on, okay, how do I think about modernizing these applications? How do I think about, you know, to your point, Stu, and opening them up and actually getting inside of them? And so I think, you know, the most valuable aspect of the approach that we've taken here is that ability to, to separate out those two, to, to get the, the quick business wins that you need, and then to take the time to think about, okay, how do I actually modernize this? How do I want to? What sort of technologies do I want to use? How should I do this right, rather than just needing to do this quickly? And so I think that's a really, really powerful uh, aspect of, of our approach and that we can give customers more optionality in terms of how they approach their modernization efforts. Yeah, so, so Kit, final question I have for you. The VMware AWS partnership has been around for a couple of years now. Yep. What would you say is the biggest change technically from when the solution was first announced uh, to, to where we are today with, with all the yep. new updates that you've talked about? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, look, it's hard to pick one, right? I, I think the biggest thing in general is just the increasing maturity of this offering. Uh, and that goes really across the board. Uh, technical maturity, operational maturity, uh, compliance, certification maturity, right? Getting more and more of those under our belt. Uh, global reach maturity, right? We started off in one region, but now we're all over the world, pretty much every region that AWS has. Uh, you see more and more features, you know, we're constantly releasing new features, uh, new hardware types. And so I think that's really the biggest thing. It, it's not been like one kind of singular thing. What it's been is, uh, just a lot of work by the team across a thousand different areas and moving all those in parallel. And that's really been the heavy lift that we've had to do over the past few years. You know, as we talked about, it was a lot of work just to get this thing out in the first place, right? We had to do a lot of technical work with AWS to enable this bare metal capability. And so we got that one out, we got it out and, um, you know, had, had that initial service there, but you know, a lot of limitations, right? We just had one instance type, only one region, um, you know, didn't have as many compliance certifications. So obviously that limited the number of customers uh, initially, right? Just because there, there were some re restrictions around that. So our goal has really been to open this up to as many customers, and in fact, every customer, all of our, you know, 500,000 odd vSphere customers to be able to move to VMC and AWS. And so we're, sl you know, slowly but surely every month uh, knocking down more and more uh, barricades to that, right? And so what you've seen is just a tremendous explosion of innovation and uh, effort across the entire team. And so it's really is kudos to the team for their continued effort day in, day out over these past three years or so uh, to get VMC and AWS to where it is today. Excellent, well, thank you so much, Kit. Uh, great to talk to you. Congratulations to the VMware and AWS team. And of course, looking forward to talking to more of the customers uh, down the road as they take advantage of this, uh, hopefully at VMworld and, and some of the Amazon shows too. Thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely. Kit. Thank you, Stu. All right, and stay with us for lots more coverage. Uh, of course, VMware Cloud on AWS, a really uh, exciting and interesting uh, topic uh, we've been covering since day one. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.